Good morning, friends. Happy Monday. Let's make sure we have audio. There it is. Okay. Welcome, welcome. I'm Diane. Thank you for um, stopping by to start the week off with a little bit of creative inspiration, I hope. And because this is the 25th, excuse my reach there, because this is the 25th, if any of you um, follow me regularly, you know that the 25th of each month, we make a Christmas card. So instead of doing two videos today, I thought we'll do our Christmas card as my Monday video. And hey, And then, just to add a little bit of a twist, we're going to include a fun fold. So before we get started, I I don't know if you um, also tune into my YouTube channel on Fridays. I do a video there also. <clears throat> I had shared the Eden's Garden Suite. My products had just arrived and so I wanted to share with everybody what they look like <clears throat> excuse me I just ran down and made a coffee because I knew if I didn't have one I would start going hoarse and coughing here because that's what happens of course whenever we go live so this product suite will become available to you the customers on November the 2nd and um, the, the stamp and die set will be included in the January to June mini catalog that comes out at the beginning of the year. But some of these other products are only available while supplies last. And these are part of the whole suite if you purchase that. Um, these are the little garden gems and they are in soft succulent and cherry cobbler. These are the dies that coordinate with the stamp set. I know that thing is such a terrible glare. No. The red rubber stamp set has um, the distinctive engravings in it, so I can't wait to get started on that. The dies make a really pretty wreath and part of the suite includes the 12 by 12 Ever Eden specialty paper and these are specialty papers because the designer series has some metallic paper inlaid in there if you can see that metallic design that's what makes it a specialty paper. One side usually has foiling in it. They are two-sided designs. This one again has the gold. And <clears throat> the reverse side, if I can pick it all up. Oh, did I get two different ones there? I did, huh? My fingers are cold this morning. They're not working. So this one is on a soft succulent background and this is on a white background. I don't know if I realized that before when I showed it on Friday. And then the backgrounds. Very pretty again. This one has some little gold dots in the middle in between those leaves. They look almost like little sparkles. And then we have some gold embossed leaves on a green background in the backs of these. I like this ombre one. That's pretty. <clears throat> and we have the gold. I, I don't know if I missed a set or not there. I hope not. I think I got them all. And then also included in the suite is the new evening evergreen and soft succulent cotton paper and these are um, they have sort of a shiny side and a matte side 
They're a little heavier than a tissue paper, lighter than a vellum. So I'm kind of curious to see how I can use these in my cards. So the reason I wanted to share all of these with you is because we are working on offering another um, virtual workshop using the Eden's Garden Bundle. And depending on how many of the creators from our team are interested, um, we will get together. And, and if nobody else actually ends up, if we can't get this together, <laughs> I'm still going to offer something on my own. And I will offer designs for three or four cards along with the cardstock and any additional embellishments that you may need for that, whether it includes the gold shimmer ribbon or metallic dots or whatever. So the price would be increased only by the amount it will take to cover those additional supplies that would be sent to you. And then um, what we had done in the past with the Marius Moments was we also shared a PDF tutorial on how to make those cards as well as a video. And those are only available to our participating guests who join in the workshop. So watch for that to come. Um, we're, we are trying to gather makers and designs. I wanna set this out of the way so I don't end up wrinkling that cotton paper. That's way too pretty. Okay, and then today's card, which my, my directions look ridiculous, but it's not that hard. It's actually very simple. But I have learned the hard way. Now, when I'm going to do a fun fold card, I need to practice it the day before because if you guys were with me on the day we made that crossover card, I made that one way harder than it needed to be. So this one, um, this is a card that I had saved on one of my Pinterest boards years and years up. And every time I go in there, I'm like, I gotta make that card. I gotta make that card. And of course I saved it in a different language. And so I found Don Olszewski had a 2016 tutorial out there that gave the, the dimensions in Imperial measurement. Because usually when I try to convert or use anyone else's conversion from metric to imperial, the pieces don't always go together right. And then there's always the problem of, is it gonna fit in our envelope? So my card went together really well yesterday. I have a little bit of a gap here, so I wanna um, try to improve my fold. And I have an envelope. Yes, it fits in our envelope. Perfect. So thank you so much, Dawn, for sharing dimensions that worked well. So this is our card. This is a twisted gatefold card and it opens up like so. A couple reminders. I was very careful. I, I wanted to use Christmas paper, but I didn't want to use directional paper. I could have managed the directional paper on my triangles. But for example, if I were to use um, Christmas trees, because this card is diagonal on itself, those Christmas trees would have probably looked like compass points pointing out from the side. So any directional paper that I would have used on here when I held the card upright was going to not be straight. So I wanted something that <clears throat> I could use on the inside and outside without worrying about that looking a little bit not right. The other thing to keep in mind is when we do a fun fold card, a lot of our, um, a little bit of glue on that, a lot of our real estate is taken up by the fold. And so you don't necessarily have a ton of room for stamping. So to do my inside card, I actually used Merriest Moments and I wanted to use this on the outside as well. I was going to use the, the 
this big one on my outside label. But I would have covered up all of my fold. And part of the fun of doing this is to show off the fold. So if I would have made a bigger label, it wouldn't have looked as, as fun. Or if I added a bunch more flowers or something on the outside, I'd be hiding the fold that, that we're showcasing. So, you know, keep, keep in mind the size of your stamp that you're going to use and how many um, decorations you're actually going to want to put on this. <clears throat> and so, I was going to say, tell me I didn't pull out Mary Merlot, but I did. Get my trimmer. Oh. And we're going to start off with an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock and cut it down the center at four and a quarter so you can get two cards out of one sheet of cardstock i guess i should just do this from the very beginning with you so eight and a half by eleven and we will cut this at four and a quarter and then open up the arm of our paper trimmer and cut lengthwise at seven and a half, seven and a half. And I am not on camera, there we go, seven and a half. And then just hold on to this because we can use that for our um, label dies for the front. Now, oh, I guess I can close this to get it out of the way because I need to see my measurements. We're going to score. So using my scoring blade at the top of my trimmer, I will score at two and a half inches and five inches. Two and a half. <clears throat> and five. And then we're going to score from the top left to the bottom right on our left panel and our right panel. Uh, top left to bottom right on both sides, yes. So I'm going to put the, the point of my card in the track and line it up to where my first two and a half inch score mark is and score on that diagonal. Sliding my card over, I'm going to do the same thing on my last panel from the top left hand corner to the bottom right. And this is it. This is all of the scoring no more um, odd cuts or anything. And I'm going to set that aside for a minute and just go ahead and get the rest of my designer series paper ready while I have my trimmer out. So again, like I said, I was trying to find something not directional, which limited me because I did not buy a ton of designer series paper this year and actually I wanted to use um, I have some brightly gleaming paper left from last year and I'm going to do this card again but that's not available anymore so I'm using paper that you can readily get and I'm using uh, Peaceful Place designer series paper and this is a specialty paper as well it's got little silver foil snowflakes and stars in there I know that if I go to use this paper, I'm not going to use the whole sheet this way. I'm, I'm more than likely going to use the pretty pine trees on the bottom. So that left me all of this paper on the top. I could have used the back, but I, I wanted the silver in there. So I'm just going to use the top of this paper. I only need three and seven eighths of an inch.
and that left me all of this paper that I can use on more cards. So I saved my pine trees. I ended up with some designer paper that when we cut it, doesn't you can't really tell that those were to be clouds. It just looks like uh, muted paper. So that was three and seven eighths by two and a quarter. Now Dawn's directions called for two panels of this. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually ended up cutting a third and using that, and I'll show you when we get there. I guess I can show you now. These, the first two panels are used for our front flap and the diagonal flap on the outside but I wanted to also add to the inside of my card. So I cut a third one. If you're going to add that on the inside, you'll need three pieces that are cut at two and a quarter by three and seven eighths. And then we also need our either very vanilla or basic white cardstock center that we'll stamp our message on. And that will be two and a quarter inches by four inches. I did put these uh, dimensions in the comments section today just in case you wanted to uh, let me see that's very vanilla in case you wanted to join along I'm going to use white because I think that um, the background on my designer series paper is more white than vanilla so two and a quarter inches by four. <clears throat> two and a quarter inches by four. And this will be that little inside panel. Okay. Uh, oh, we got to... Uh, let's get this part done first because we have to cut our designer series paper now into triangles, but that was the only mistake that I made when I was doing my sample card yesterday because I did cut one of them backwards. So we're going to fold our side panels in like our card is closing. Give it a little burnish with your bone folder there. This is going to be kind of important to make your card stay shut. And then each of these triangle pieces will fold outwards from the diagonal score line that we made. And this is where I'm hoping... Oh good, that lined up pretty well today. And there you have your, your twisted fold. <clears throat> I am going to burnish these a little more because I want them to stay closed. And I'll probably do it a couple more times as well once we get our um, decorator paper on the front. Uh, where'd that one little point go? Up here, I see a little, a little tab of paper. All right, so now we need our designer series paper for this diagonal, this diagonal, and so on. So I'm gonna get my trimmer back out. Keep your fingers crossed that I do this right today. I should have left my bad one sitting out here so I could take a look at it and know which way to not cut it. Where did I put it? I would share it with you, but I don't know where I put it. Okay, so I need my um, wider piece at the top and my narrow piece at the bottom. So we're going to cut diagonally from top left to bottom right, the same way that we scored our flaps, which really, if I'd have paid attention, would have told me which way to cut the paper. 
I don't know what I was thinking of at the moment. And there's one flap. And we're going to do the same thing. Am I lying? Or am I not lying? No, we're going to do the same thing. Top left, bottom right. Am I still on the camera there? It's kind of hard with the trimmer. I want to make sure you can see what we're doing, but it's it's a little longer than my grid pad under here, and I know a lot of times I kind of go off screen. And then we will just lay those on here as well. Okay. And then we need the piece for the outside. And I think this is where I messed up because this one, I need my widest part up here. I will be I will be cutting from my top right to bottom left. And this is going to fit on the underneath side. Yay! I think we got them all right this time. Yeah. Okay, now I can put my trimmer away. Get that out of the way. This actually was a different card that I was working on. And then you can either use liquid glue or tape runner. My tape runners finally came from Amazon yesterday, Saturday. Because I was completely out. There was no question about what we were using. I was down to my last little bit of Pondo liquid glue. And that will work when you're using it on a thin designer series paper. Make sure that you're only using small. Um, yep, this one's on its way too. Small amounts of the glue because it can leave ridges in your paper and you don't really want that so I'll line that up you also stand a better chance of your glue not seeping out from underneath the paper if you just use small amounts because Tombow does tend to leave your paper sticky if it um, Sneaks out around the edges there. So all we really have to do now is glue our designer series paper onto each diagonal folded piece. Yeah, so if you've thought about doing one of these workshops, the virtual ones and you think that it's kind of expensive keep in mind the products are yours to keep and the additional cost is sort of going to help you out say like um, we are using a pro we're doing a design that uses the gold metallic ribbon and you're thinking, that's cute, but I don't want 10 yards of gold metallic ribbon. I will never use that much. Well, when you do the virtual workshops with us, we're sending you what you need to make those cards. You don't have to purchase a whole spool of ribbon if you don't think that you're going to use it. Of course you can if you think that that's... Um, A ribbon that you're going to use. I just changed my blade on there, but I'm getting little tabs of paper at the end. Um, if you think that that's a product you're going to use again and you want to get a whole thing of it, then you're welcome to do it. Or if you think, oh, those are cute, I think I would like to see them in person. Well, when you get these virtual products, you get to try them out in person. And then if you like it and you want to get more, 
Trust me. I love it when you order from me. So once we have all these details decided, I will add that to my web page as along with a um, an order form, a registration form, because you'll need to order your Eden's Garden products from the registration form rather than online so that your demonstrator will know to um, get your card stocks sent to you as well as the additional products that you would need. And that you're going to participate in the workshop so that we could send you the PDFs and the tutorial links. Okay, look at how easy this is going together. I haven't even screwed it up. I'm so excited with this. Why did I wait so long to do this fold? And so really your card is um, <clears throat> right side up at a, at a diagonal. Isn't that cute? I love it. So then I used, um, hmm, can I have an extra piece of white over here? I think I do. And we can die cut our, our word joy from merriest moments. I have, I did bring out Smoky Slate and Mary Merlot because I wasn't quite sure which ink I wanted to use. I ended up using the Smoky Slate. I did it on my my grid pad here because I wanted to see how dark it was going to be. I ended up using that to make um, these little speckles in the stamp set. I added some of those around my my inside message just so that they would kind of tie in all the little silver stars and snowflakes I keep catching my sleeve that's the bad thing about it getting colder here. all right so i'm going to use joy oh, i'm doing my front and i am die cutting this with the seasonal label dies so i'm stamping towards the center of my cardstock, which will leave me enough room for my die to cut around the stamp, clean my stamp off. And then on my inside, which one did I use together? Is the merriest? Nope, thinking of you. This festive season. Thinking of you this festive season. Also in Mary Merlot. And why, you may ask, did I lay that on my paper and pick it up? Sometimes when you put your stamp on here directly to the acrylic block, you could leave a little bit of a bubble or a wrinkle. I like to just lay it on my grid pad and pick it up directly with my block, and it sticks really nice, especially if you're using, let's see, do we have one in here? A long, skinny strip stamp. Oh, I don't think there's one in here. Oh, yes, there is. So if I were to put my season's greetings on here, I could accidentally get this um, a little crooked. Now I'm going to try to do it and I won't be able to. So if I put it on there, look at what I did. I made, I made it kind of crooked. Instead, if I lay my stamp onto my paper and pick it up, I'm picking it up straight and I will get a nicer stamp. Okay. I also place my stamps onto my acrylic block, not even with the edge of my block because when I go to stamp on my paper, 
My eyes could deceive me. I could be trying to watch my block and line it up, and maybe my stamp isn't exactly on there straight. So I put it on there a little crooked on purpose. And now when I go to look at it and stamp, I'm looking at my, my stamped image and not my block. Not that I'm gonna get it perfect because I stamp crooked a lot, but those tricks do help. Okay, that one came out pretty straight, see? I am using my Simply Chamois, which looks ridiculously filthy, but it I wash it when it starts looking dirty and the ink quits running out of it. And even though my chamois is stained, it still cleans my stamps off. Great. Love them. Now I'm going to use that little spotty stamp with some of the smoky slate and just stamp around that inside, breathing a little bit. See how far can I pull this down to me? So you can still see it, but I can see what I'm doing. I'm stamping off the edge of the paper so I don't look like I'm planning this out or trying too awfully hard. I want it to look a little organic, a little natural. Twist my block around a little so I'm getting different sides of the stamp. And I think I'll just do a little on the sides. And then that gives me a little bit of that snowflakey sense, carrying it over from the designer series paper. It just kind of makes it all a little more cohesive. Everything goes together. Put that stamp away. Now let me get my dies out. I got paper stuck in here. My case won't close. So we're using the seasonal label dies. I want to cut Joy out with the smallest. And I'm going to add <clears throat> one of the little poinsettias from Merriest Moments dies. So I'm adding my Joy, did I put it on the top or the bottom? Kind of in the center, I guess. I thought I moved it up a little bit. I want room to put a flower. Oh, I know, I added a, I added a rhinestone on there to even it out. Some bling. And then we'll use that extra little piece of cardstock that we had left over. I will cut a background label. I don't trust myself. Let's go that way. And I don't know if I can fit these all on my die cut machine at the same time. Whoop. Slip right off of there. I'm using those little three those three little flowers. And one of the tricks that I did share in our Marius Moments stamp camp was if you want to make a smaller flower, you can use just, <coughs> excuse me, the smallest and the medium flowers and put them together. If you're making a little bit of a larger one, then use all three of them to layer. Oh, let's get up our big boss here. I think I 
can fit them all on here. I'll get this through in one pass. Yay! Today's going pretty good for a Monday. <sighs> all right. Sorry about that little shaky there, the earthquake. Get these all out of here. And we can put this away. save my little pieces of washi so that when I need a low tack tape that's not going to tear my cardstock I can just reuse that and then let's take out our three little flowers And you can get as elaborate as you like to with your designs here. You can, um, as I said, you can continue making more flowers to put on the front of it or add more leaves. I didn't put leaves on mine. Again, I was trying not to cover up the fun fold factor here. So I'm just going to layer my smallest flower onto the middle size and I'm offsetting my petals and then I don't know how I keep getting glue dots on both sides of this I didn't think they were on both sides but I, might, I don't know and then onto the largest and just twist your flowers around until you get them lined up the way you want them. Okay. You can use the end of a pokey tool and if you have a piercing mat or a piece of foam you can kind of just lay in there again and give it a little bit of um, dimension to your flower. Of course you know when it goes in the mailbox going to come out flat later, but you can try. All right, let's put the rest of this together. I'm going to put my runner. I'm just going to add my greeting onto the front of this label. Add my message on the inside. And yes, I'm out of stamp and seal plus, so this is just my Amazon tape runner. I'm gonna order more of that and more of Mary Merlot. I didn't realize I had been using it quite as much as I have. Okay. Now when we go to add our front 
panel. Remember only to put adhesive on one side or you're going to glue your card shut. So, I am going to use some liquid glue on here so that I have just a couple of minutes leeway time there to move my I cut label around and get it where I want it because you know, when you use tape runner and you add it to your card it sticks sometimes you can move it around but not quite as easily as if you use liquid glue I get that centered on there give it a little press and then I need one more glue dot for my flower and then we're going to get out some holiday rhinestones. Oh, come here, glue dot. Put this down on the bottom of my front label. Okay. Holiday rhinestone basic jewels. And I'm using, um, I don't know if this is cherry cobbler, what color the red is, but I really didn't want to use the amber colored ones, which would make a great flower center, because they're too close to gold, and I have silver in my paper. So, well, what's she barking at? I just added our red ones. Kind of laid out where I wanted them to go. And again, um, I am going to use my bone folder and crease those down one more time to help them keep the card shut. So remember that if you want to do the inside, you don't have to. You could you could add um, basic white on the inside and then continue stamping or leave room to write a little bit more of your messages. I I just wanted to have that the same as my front. Again, you make your cards the way you want them to be, and you can use this technique for other cards besides Christmas. You know, alter your designer series paper and, and use it to make birthday cards or thinking of you or whatever you like, get well. Um, yeah. So, remember if you have any questions, you can, where do I just put that, um, oh, I put it away. My Eden's Garden had my email address on there. Here you go. There you go. So, any questions or any product that you need, anything I can help you with. You can reach me at Diane at BohoStamper.com. You can go to my website, BohoStamper.com, and I will be adding our Eden's Garden virtual workshop information out there as soon as everybody gets it together and, and uh, decides, and we decide how many creators are going to um, share their designs and include them in the workshop. So thanks everyone for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed making a Christmas card, a fun fold, and some Monday creativity. Come back on Friday on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure what I'm going to do Friday. I really am itching to um, get my foil machine out, my hot foil machine, and do some 
flailing. Of course, my <clears throat> my work table is so full right now. I don't know where I will put that to use it, but but if I want to do it bad enough, I guess I'll find room, right? So thanks again. See you next time and have a wonderful week. Bye.